And we're back at uh, Burns Park here in North Little Rock, Arkansas, second half of this game between the Austin Crows and the Houston Lone Stars. The winner of this one punches a ticket into the Central Regional Grand Final. Brian Barish with Brent Miller with you as Jesse Carcamo runs through as he slices and dices like a Ginsu th through, a, through a, a, a screw, and the ball gets punched away and then picked up again by Connell, who will throw that one on to the right, and it's marked as uh, stepping up and taking it was somebody with a four on the end of it. We'll call that Rally Duxon because he's the first one I saw, and and then that one is up on the far side as they continue it up. Nice mark by Uzabiaga. So Arno Uzabiaga will go back. I don't think that's what they call him. Well, I don't have his nickname on here. So here is Uzabiaga looking for his second. That's a pretty good kick. It's going to die in the square. And then it's punched away. Still kept in play. Off the ground, but I... Oh, it's still kept in play. It's soccered through, but I believe it has gone through for behind, and it has. As Aguirre was there, Johnny on the spot right in the goal square, but uh, his direction failed him. So on the Little Rock scoreboard, that takes them on to 6 Two thirty-eight, one two eight. It's a thirty-point lead for Austin. Now Houston will come back. We mentioned they do have the breeze. It isn't much of a breeze as they come out to the near side where he finds Jamnick, and boy did he did he have to earn that one. Jammer, as they call him, he's got. And now he's told to play on as they didn't really give him much of a lead. That's a wounded duck up in the middle, punched free there by the number twenty-nine. And they play that one on up in the middle of the ground. Goes into the middle, looking for Cox. Here comes Merritt. Money, 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 money. Goes into the inside. Has the number two there in somebody. And then kick that one through. The numbers are not in numerical order. So I'm only going to spend a second looking at them. As that one comes out to the near side. Picked up by Bryant. Davey and Bryant. Davey Bryant, who we had in the last game momentarily on comments. And the ball comes down below. Oh, big hit, but he just got it away. Great job, and then he was thrown to the ground. He's going to feel that tomorrow. Simon Craig, and they're told to play on, and they've got to make an emergency substitution, which they do, as uh, they throw on the, the number 40 there in Boyce, and uh, he is holding his head. I wasn't sure who that was. But then turning around and straight out into the middle goes uh, Chisholm, or Verruti rather, and then that one goes down, shoved it away a couple of times there, pushing him away there was um, was Brown. His head bounced off the turf there pretty hard. I think he might have a little bit of a concussion. concussion yeah. And sitting up, I believe. Uh, now, the last player I know that had 47, I don't have a 47 listed here. I believe that was Sean Connell, but I also think he may have gone back to Australia. So I don't know who that is. But in any event, he's, um, well, he's still standing on the sideline. We may actually see him go back in. I think he passed the concussion protocol test. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you saw his head bounce. I just saw the end of the tackle. As that one goes in short, and it's wrapped up, a little bit of pushing and shoving, and then it squirts out, and the ball will find the boundary line. Could have just had the breath knocked out of him, it looks like. Now, to be fair, uh, that was uh, one of the uh, trainers over here, one of the local trainers that we have uh, here in North Little Rock. And uh, so it's not like he was just talking to somebody. It was, that actually was actually, we, we, were, we were joking about it, but I think that was actually the protocol as they go up. And uh, looks like a uh, high contact, maybe. And they're uh, well, a little bit, of, a little bit of RG bargy in there pushing around. Uh, you know this pretty well. These are two teams that uh, know each other. There's there's respect to an extent, but uh, a little bit of dislike, at least in the competitive sense. Yeah, I mean they they face each other a good three four times a year. So you you get bumped by a guy over and over again, you're gonna want to bump him back. Here come the Crows back the other direction. It is marked. So Houston, at the very least, able to stem some of these. But you know, the Crows—they only have two players in the in the in the uh, inside 50, and that's about it. Here is Maddie Stevens, a big kick, one-on-one -on -one contest. Nice mark. Oh, he climbed the ladder to get to that one. 
And that was Donnelly. He'll go in short. Not taken cleanly. Two bites of the cherry. I don't know what that was. Spooning it along. Now he's going to throw that one on. And Nastis, it's going to just... Oh, and it was marked by Montgomery right at the line. David Nastis has just come back from Australia as well. He was playing for Melbourne University for a time. And he's one of their better players. And he actually, he'll be headed to Nash, uh, to uh, the IC as well. Carcamo steps up and takes a nice mark. So here is Carcamo. No, nobody making a lead. I saw one momentarily, so he has to go back. And he does so to Steve Ryan. Ryan throws it on. Crash boom opera. Ball goes to ground. They dig around for it. And then there is Boise to end that nonsense. And then kick that one up on the far side. Again on the Little Rock scoreboard. It's 6-2-38 Austin. 1-2-8 Houston. The winner of this again goes to the grand final at the end of the day. And Austin looking for their third straight grand final as they take the mark. Our third straight championship. There was no grand final last year. It was just a straight round robin. Out to the near side, almost taken there by uh, number two, who is uh, Giliotti. There is Merritt. Throws that one on to the right. Hit his shins. Hit the hit the air. They throw that one on the left at Pelletier. It'll bounce. It'll hop. It'll skip. It'll roll through, and it will roll out of bounds for a boundary throw-in. Sorry, that's Nick Anderson. I had been calling him John Paul Pelletier, but that is, in fact, Nick Anderson, number 41, who had a goal in the last game for the Crows. And I'm curious. This is the last year. Well, here, we'll wait till the ball comes out. As the ball comes back into play, Austin trying to get it out of their territory as they turn that one in or trying to force it further. And then a good smother there by, uh, uh, looks like by Simon Craig. Still kept in. And then handballs it away, and Craig again can't get to it, and that one is on that near side. It's still kept in the play. That one is thrown in by Butt. Yes. <laughs> Seymour. Seymour Butt. And then, <laughs> all right, you got me. I said it. And the ball goes to the ground, and then they try to get it out through Job, and Job is hold down, and a little bit of pushing and shoving in there as Carcamo was the recipient, but it's a mark taken by Merritt. Money will go in short. It is. Nope, and then throws that one on to the right over the top, one-on-one, -on -one. punch down. Can they Can they at least uh, surrender the behind? And they do, and that is another point. As uh, that, They'll gladly give up that point, will the, uh, will the Lone Stars. That takes on, they takes them on to 6-3-39 on the Little Rock scoreboard, 1-2-8 for Houston. That's a 31-point difference. Now, I was going to ask, you guys played three games last year. It was a little bit warmer than it was with it now in Indianapolis. That's what I was going to say. I don't know the difference in latitude, but I can tell you the difference in temperature, and it's quite, quite a few degrees. And there was no, I mean, there was a wind, but it was a hot wind because oh. it did affect most of the games last year, as you know, especially Austin, who was down to Denver at halftime by about six goals, and they came back and won. Man, we played, uh, I can't remember who we played in the very first game, but somebody gave me a handball that was well above my head in the center square. I went up for it and got undercut, landed flat on my back. It was a miserable rest of my day. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, uh, Nolan Cox has kicked another goal. So on the Little Rock scoreboard, that takes them on to 7-3-45. And uh, I think the issue is becoming less and less in doubt. Well, i got to sign off here. Hopefully I can hop on with you in the third-place game. By all means, mate. We're glad to have you. Well, thanks, Bren Miller. Appreciate it. See you, sir. Likewise, as we continue on here in the in this uh, game number five, again, the Austin Crows looking very, very, uh, very, very sure that they're going to make it on. It looks that way for now. But the Houston Lone Stars are one of the toughest organizations in the USAFL. They're one of the toughest teams. You know they're not going to give up, especially against Austin. Uh, they are, like I said, very familiar with this Crows side. As that one goes into the middle, tipped off the top. And again, it is, um, it is Veruti who goes into the middle. And then it's turned over there to the 34, who is Nicky Lewis. Or check that, that was uh, Rob Pasolo. And now they're told to go. And up over the top, and then here is Butt, who will go all the way back. And that one will go out of bounds. It will be a boundary throw-in. On the Little Rock scoreboard, it's 7-3-45 Austin, 1-2-8 
for the Houston Lone Stars. Brian Barish with you here at the USAFL Central Regional Tournament from Burns Park in North Little Rock, Arkansas. And again, our thanks to uh, Little Rock CVB and uh, the Little Rock, uh, the North Little Rock Parks and Rec Department for help putting this on as Donnelly takes a nice mark. So here is Donnelly, who is going to set up and kick this one from just outside the square. The kick is from 45. The kick is up on the way. It looks pretty good. It is a behind. Look good coming off the foot, but only a minor score. And on the Little Rock scoreboard, that's their fourth score of the game. It takes them on to 139. 7-3-45 is the score for it's now a six point uh, six uh, goal differential. And Austin looking to make it in. Now in 2015, there was a grand final, and they defeated the New York Magpies to win. It was an undermanned New York side on a little bit of a slick field in Racine, Wisconsin. And then last year they went 3-0, and defeating Dallas in the final game of the round robin to finish at 3-0. and that one is kicked up high. It is tipped off the top and then rushed through for another minor score. It might have gone through either way, but uh, over to see it through was uh, Raleigh Duxon. So that gets him in the double digits at least. 1-4-10 Houston on the Little Rock scoreboard. 7-3-45 for the Austin Crows as they close in on win number 27 in a row. Out in the middle. <laughs> they were calling him Seaborn and it made me laugh. Up high. And Donnelly, he's wrapped up by the aforementioned Mr. Butt as well as uh, the 13 in there who is uh, Blair Mortimer. And that'll be a, a, a ball up. But Houston again looking for another, another goal here. And then here is Monty. Mike Montgomery gets rid of it. Up the far side, and the ball goes out of bounds. <laughs> and I believe that's going out on the full. So here is Houston. And you know what? The Lone Stars have not played bad. They've stood up to the to the, uh, to the the Crows. Uh, they haven't gotten as many chances as they have last year and uh, as last time. As that one sails for goal, and that one is tipped by Mortimer, who is tracking that one back. There were three blue stripe, blue hoop jerseys around the goal square. So that was a pretty uh, fair hope he would have had to miss that completely. So on the Little Rock scoreboard, that takes them on to 1-5-11. Or no, they've given that as a goal. They gave it as a goal. I'm sorry. I thought that it was tipped over the line. My apologies. Well, it was over Mortimer. And in fact, it is a goal. So correction on the Little Rock scoreboard, it's 2-4-16. It's back to a 29-point game, 7-3-45. That was really close. From here, it looked like Mortimer had touched it before it went over the line. Of course, if that happened, then it would have been given as a rush behind. But the goal umpire said that the ball had crossed the line completely before it was touched. So it's a goal. So second goal for the Lone Stars. They needed that one. And then being thrown down to the ground was... Uh, Chris Fielder for Houston, and we'll have another ball up. And that one is slapped forward. Here is Carcamo, the horse. Hand balls it off. They're going to just got that away. Here is Donnelly looking for an option. He throws that one smothered right off the right off the defender. And then again, here's Verudi. Verudi is just couldn't get to it, but uh, Montgomery will end that and then throws that one on to the right one on one. Oof! Big contact, but Houston ends up with it as they skitter that one forward. Again, looking for Verudi. The ball doesn't sit up for him. It looked like he got horse collared, but didn't. And then uh, 22 in there, which is uh, which is Matt Palter. And the ball has gone out of bounds. And uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving. And in fact, a free kick after the pushing and shoving, and it looks like Richard Verruti. So Verruti will throw that one on to the left. The wind holds it up. It's tipped off the top, knocked to ground, and then scuttled through. The ball looks like it's going out of bounds. So a very advantageous opportunity for Houston as the ball will be in the shadow of their behind post. 
Ball comes spinning, spinning back in the play. Again, that was uh, Poulter who had it, and then he was thrown to the ground. And it'll be a free kick as it looks like it was high contact. Again, on the Little Rock scoreboard, Austin 45, Houston 16. Winner of this one goes to the grand final later on this afternoon here at the Central Regionals in North Little Rock. Be a boundary throw in directly across from us. Ball comes spinning, spinning back in the play. Batted around like a ping pong ball. But without the paddles and out of bounds again. And Austin won't mind this because it'll take time off the clock. They still have one more game to play. Both of these teams do. So at this point, it's about conserving as much energy as possible. Ball goes to ground. And then put away. That would knocked free. May keeping vigil. And then Carcano boots that one onto the right. Tipped off the top. And then the ball will roll out of bounds. And nope, stayed in play. As Palter was did it was over there, and then the ball goes out of bounds. And another boundary throw in Houston looking for a call that wasn't forthcoming. Again, trailing by 29 points. As the dogs are out here at Burns Park. Here's a long kick from Stevens off his left foot over the head of Carcano. Donnelly was going back there. Or check that that was Craig. And that one is centered into the middle. One on two. May couldn't hand on to it. Verudi. Verudi stayed with it. And he's, well, did he drag that in? No, he didn't. And the umpire crosses his arms like the Monsignor. It's a ball up. Houston knocking on the doorstep again, trailing by 29 points on the Little Rock scoreboard. Ball comes up. Ball goes down. That was a throw. Oh, my. It does not get any more obvious than that. I mean, it looked impressive. It just wasn't legal. So a free kick to Jesse Carcamo from dead in front. And this to make the margin a little bit more respectable. And Jesse Carcamo has not made it. Well, well, you would expect a national team player to do better from right in front, but all the same, that just goes back to the kicking troubles that they had against Austin when they played two weekends ago and they lost by five points. There are two goals, five on the, on the uh, Little Rock scoreboard. That's 17. They trail Austin 4-3-45, a 7-3-45. Austin last, uh, that, during that, uh, they had, uh, what was it, 3-5-25. Uh, I'm sorry, 4, was it? No, 4-1-25. And Houston had kicked two goals, eight behinds, and had at least one of them been straighter, they would have had, had to stop this winning streak, which it w appears very possible will be going to 27 games. He's told to play on, and they swing that into the middle for Brown, who gets that one into the middle, and it's marked on a line. Kicks it with his left foot, which is his right foot, and again he finds Mortimer. And Mortimer comes into the square all through the hands of Stevens. And then he had to pound the ball along the ground or check that there was Mickey Kleinhens. Stay with it. And the umpire says, give it to me. We'll have a ball up. And again, a pile forms. A little bit of pushing. As we get towards the end of this game here, again, it's a 28-point margin. Ball back in the air. Deflected by Brown, and then a good nice mark. And Houston. So Houston are doing some good things. They're taking nice marks. They've got some good passages of play here. Fielder. Digs in, and we'll have a boundary, and we'll have a ball up. Now, we haven't seen him. haven't called his name yet, but uh, 
uh, Sam Whitehead from the Houston Lone Stars uh, also has uh, International Cup experience, but he played for the New Zealand uh, Hawks back in 2008 and actually went to the grand final where they invariably lost to Papua New Guinea. Uh, both of those teams, the U.S. has never beaten before, incidentally, in International Cup play. And the draw hasn't come out yet as of this recording, so hopefully uh, it'll be interesting to see if the U.S. will have to go through either of those teams to get to the final at the MCG. Uh-oh, oh, now it's on here. A little bit more pushing and shoving. A lot more pushing and shoving here. And now it's also important to remember that here in the USAFL, there was a card system, uh, not unlike rugby, where there is um, a 15-minute sin bin. And um, any player that goes off, the, the team is actually down for 15 minutes. Or actually, no, I apologize. That's on a red card. The team is down. And uh, that actually, that is the final whistle that has gone at the, at the end there. So... An inauspicious end, but in fact, Austin's win streak goes to 27 games. It's a 28-point win over Houston. The final line score on the Little Rock scoreboard, it's the Austin Crows. Seven goals, three behinds, 45 points. The Houston Lone Stars, 2-5-17. That'll do it for this game. We have more footy action. Check us out on YouTube.com slash USAFL uh, 1997 on our website at USAFL.com. Uh, on Facebook at facebook.com slash USAFL1997 and on Twitter at USAFL1997. Until then, this is Brian Barish from North Little Rock. It's goodbye for now.